The capital of Belarus, Minsk, is a city that is famous for its Stalin-styled architecture. There are many museums, theaters, restaurants, all located in the Independence Avenue, also known as Prospect Nezavisimosti, which is a street that is famous for being, well, the longest street in Minsk, and it has about, with a length of about 15 kilometers. Uh, today we're going to talk about some things that you need to know before coming to Minsk, Belarus, and I listed them into three categories, which is culture, entertainment and shopping and souvenirs. Culture. If you want to learn more about the culture of Belarus, then one place you need to visit is the Museum of the Great Patriotic War. It's located not far from Nimiga and you can get there by like pretty much any mode of transport. Um, there's also the National Library which is located in Metro Vostok. And at night, you can see how the, the, the architecture, the style of the, of, of the museum shines and illuminates different kinds of uh, graphics and stuff. But if you're a fan of the opera and ballet, then I would suggest you visit the National Theater of Opera and Ballet, which is also located not far from Nimiga, and you can get there quite easily. There's also a place called Trinity Hall, or in Russian, as it's called Troitskaya Predmiestia. Um, it's located in the city center, right in Imiga, and it's one of the most historical places of the city. Second, shopping and souvenirs. Are you looking to go shopping or you want to buy some interesting Belarusian souvenirs? Then right in uh, Troitskaya Predmiestia, also known as Trinity Hall, you can see uh, so many Belarusian artisans who sell different kinds of, of souvenirs. Um, they include like magnets, dishes, hats, and embroidered shirts, and so many things. However, if you're looking for more traditional souvenirs, then I would suggest you visit the two famous shopping centers called Gum and Tsum. Let's take Gum for example. It's also located in the city center, and this is one of the shopping centers that have existed since the Soviet times. It was called by a French ar architect, the Rolling Stones of the Soviet architecture. Um, close to Gum also is the Soviet is the Soviet cafe called Lakumka, <laughs> where you can enjoy a warm cup of coffee and you can sit by the windows that show you an interesting view of the Independence Avenue. Lakumka is also one of those places where they sell authentic Belarusian uh, pastries and chocolates. And speaking about pastries, if you're a lover of the baked goods, then I would suggest you visit uh, a cafe called Karavai. It's located not far from Metro Station Plushet Pabiedi, and here you can find so many kinds of Belarusian pastries, and they are also not so expensive, and well, I tried for myself, and they're actually really good. The third category is entertainment. <laughs> The music entertainment scene is something that will surely leave you amazed. Like, you're definitely not going to go home disappointed. Um, if you're looking to have a good time, then I would suggest you visit Street Zibitskaya, which is a street that is famously known as the Party Street in Minsk. Here you can find the coolest bars, pubs, cafes, restaurants, clubs, hookah bars, and just anything that comes to your mind, you definitely find it at Zivitskaya. In Minsk, you can also find numerous nightclubs and casinos. In addition, I decided to list three places where you won't regret spending your whole day in, in Minsk. And the first one is the Museum of National Architecture. The Museum of National Architecture is located just four kilometers from Minsk close to a village called Ozertso and you can get there um, in 10 minutes by taking bus 170E which stops at metro stations Malinovka and Petrovshina and they also have excursions in English. Second, the Lines of Stalin. This is a series of fortified areas just along the western border of the former USSR. Uh, it's located just about 30 kilometers from the capital. Although it's much more comfortable to get there by car, you can also get there by minibus that takes off from the dispatch station called Druzhnaya. And uh, it, has, it comes within an interval of about 20 minutes. Um, in the lines of standing, you can see uh, armaments of the Soviet Union and you can see the military equipment that they used during the Great Patriotic War, like aircraft, armored vehicles and artillery. Uh, after the excursion, you might also be tempted to try uh, to head to the cafe called Naprivalia, which kind of 
translates to on the halt in English. And here you can try the famous porridge that the soldiers were fed during the Great Patriotic War. Um, if you're looking for just a simple guide in Minsk, you can find it in absolutely any corner, like every corner of the city. Um, and if you're interested in taking an excursion, there is a, a double-decker Minsk tour bus that takes off from Street Kirova. Um, and this is a tour bus that takes you around the city and, with, and it's equipped with audio tapes in over eight languages. So, yeah. I hope you have fun whenever, if you plan on coming to Minsk and just keep this in mind, it's actually um, a really interesting uh, city to visit and I hope you guys like it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please feel free to leave likes and comments below and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.